With the representation of the order sheet form all built out in the order sheet component class, I'm ready to wire up the control group to the template. Now I'm going to make use of a built-in Angular directive named ng-form-model to do this. Since forms are such a common piece of building web apps, the Angular platform includes form-related directives out of the box for you, so you don't need to provide them to a bootstrap call or to the component metadata. Switching over to the order sheet component HTML file, I can start wiring things up. The first thing I need to do is make use of the ng-form-model directive which has a selector of ng form model in camel case. This directive will bind a control group to a DOM element. So I add the property binding ng form model in square brackets on the form element and set it equal to the name of the control group class property I created, order sheet form. Pretty straightforward. Now Angular knows that the order sheet form control group is going to be used on this form element and everything within it. And since I have a property on the order sheet component that has the control group, I don't need to create a template reference variable to the form to work with it. Now down at the bottom of the markup, I have this debug-panel custom element, which is a component in the project to help out displaying object data. The value of the control group is an object, and this debug panel has an input property named data. So I'm going to make use of that data property and set it equal to order sheet form dot value, which is a property that holds the value of the abstract control. And if I check this thing out in the browser, I can see I have this show debug link here. And if I click on it, a debug panel shows, which has the representation of the form model I built up in code with the value set to the default values I declared in the component class. In the upcoming videos, I will go through wiring up each of the form fields to their respective controls in that order sheet form control group. I'll jump back over to the code and do two more things now. In the order sheet component HTML file, I need to wire up events for submit and for the resetting of the form. Down at the bottom of this markup, there are buttons for submit and reset. I created an on clear form method in an earlier video on the order sheet component class. So I can wire up the click event using the parentheses around the term click as per Angular's template syntax for wiring up to native DOM events, and set that equal to a statement of a call to that onClear form method. And remember, I had to add that temporary fix to support the reset by creating a component property named formActive with the intent of using that in an ngif. So up on the form element, I will add asterisk ngif and set that equal to formActive. Now for the submit button. Notice that there's a button with its type set to submit. Browsers will natively treat this as the input that will handle submitting a form element that this thing is a child of. So a click of it will submit the form in the default browser manner. But I don't want that. I want Angular to handle that. Well, the ng form model directive provides an output named ng submit in camel case that can be used to intercept the native form submission and do the Angular thing instead. So up at the top of the file on the form element, I can add the template binding for the event ng submit in parentheses and set that equal to a method call of on submit form. And back in the order sheet component ts file, I just need to add the on submit form method. And in the body of that method is where I would put the logic to submit this form off to some service. But for this course, I can just console log this dot order sheet form dot value.